my mother heard from some of her middle-aged friends that their married baby daughters found their nice successful husbands on eHarmony. <laughs> this was appealing to my mother since I was neither married nor babied. And this was a huge problem for her. She was convinced that since it was the most expensive dating site, it would obviously have the most successful stock from which to choose. She didn't hesitate to share this news with me. Unfortunately, since it was the most expensive dating site and I had no money and I wasn't interested in dating online, I told her I wasn't signing up. Several days later, a check arrived in the mail for $150. <laughs> it was from my mother. The memo line read, good luck on eHarmony. Fine, mother, fine. I, like most of us who have tried online dating, signed on with low expectations and lots of shame. <laughs> I was mortified that I had become one of those pathetic people who had to go online to find love, and moreover, that the mission was funded by my mother. Regardless, I'm a woman over 30 who's tired of the bar scene, so I sucked up my pride and logged on. The questionnaire took three days to complete. You'd have to fill out less paperwork to adopt a baby. <clears throat> the first guy I went out with was a lawyer. My mother was pleased. He drank five scotches and six beers at dinner and then proceeded to drunk text me all night long that I was a bitch and a tease. The second guy was also a lawyer. It went well until I called him one night in the middle of the World Series to ask why I hadn't heard from him in a few days. And he sighed loudly into the phone and shouted at me that he'd need to put on his jazz shoes and think like a girl. But right? Fuck that guy. I was feeling discouraged when a cute, funny pediatrician rode in on his internet white horse. He had gone to an Ivy League school he taught at an inner city school for a while. He was adept at spelling and grammar, a tremendous asset online. <laughs> Most of his pictures featured him engaged in outgoing activities, surfing, hiking, dancing, standing up. <laughs> One photo featured him sitting in a wheelchair, but the photo looked old. His hair was split down the middle like the boys wore it in the 90s. So I figured maybe he was in a wheelchair for a period of time, but then he'd recovered. And if that was the case, it seemed like the kind of thing that would build character. An outgoing, articulate teacher turned doctor with strong character. I became convinced that I would become one of those obnoxious online dating success stories. But then, of course, I started to mildly panic. What if he was currently in a wheelchair? I mean, surely that's the sort of thing that someone might mention in his profile, especially if most of his photos featured him actively using his legs. So I assumed that if he were in a wheelchair, he'd come out and say it. So I consulted a couple of friends. They said things like, I knew a girl once who married a guy who was paralyzed from the waist down, and they have the perfect life together. He was so great over email. I'd do it. My mother said I was being shallow and that he could be my soulmate. I wondered how he'd get into my apartment. There were so many stairs. <laughs> I emailed him back and asked him if he'd like to get a drink on Sunday. He responded that he didn't drink and suggested that we go to a gourmet market, the zoo, or a dessert bar. I thought it would be weird to walk around a grocery store for the first date, and I'm allergic to most things with fur, so I agreed to dessert. He cited the location that had the best parking. I'm easy to find, he joked. I'm the real good looking dude. When I got to the restaurant on Sunday, there were screeching four-year-olds at a birthday party running around rampant. I scanned the room for the real good looking dude and saw just one guy sitting alone. He was very much in a wheelchair, hunched over to one side, but strapped in securely. My eyes welled up with tears. When I introduced myself, he stuck his hand out and struggled to say hello. It was nearly impossible to understand him. His speech was severely impaired. He wheeled himself over to the counter and ordered two milkshakes. It took him nearly 10 minutes to place his order, take out his credit card, give it to the kid at the counter, and sign his name. 
I had to fight with myself not to grab the pen and do it for him, but I didn't want to emasculate him. Back at the table, he finished a lactose pill out of his fanny pack and explained that he was lactose intolerant but loved milkshakes far too much to give them up. The pill kept falling out of his mouth. He finally got it in on the fourth try. He offered me one. I said no thanks. After explaining that a giant brain tumor had left him paralyzed for the rest of his life, he tried to make small talk. Did I like my job? It sounded so cool. Did I like milkshakes? He loved milkshakes. Did I have siblings? He had one. After nearly two hours, I found an appropriate sliver of opportunity to excuse myself. He asked if he wanted me to wait with him until his caretaker arrived. I, and he, I asked if he wanted me to wait with him until his caretaker arrived. He said no. So I left him there with his chocolate milkshake, got into the car, and cried for an hour. A half, a half hour later, I got this email. It was great to meet you today. The place got all nice and quiet after the party left, and I think right after you left. The kids were cute, but a bit screechy. Would I be wasting my time to ask you out again? I lied. It was really great to meet you too. I have to be honest, I'm having some unresolved issues with my ex and I don't feel ready to be dating right now. So I'm going to have to politely decline a second date. Thanks again for a lovely time. That night, I canceled my eHarmony account. <laughs> <laughs>